Hello, and welcome to Metro Arts. I am your host, Rachel Simone. Here on Metro Arts, we highlight some of the best in the business, from fine artists, photographers, and performing artists, to cinematographers and musical artists, all from the Metro Detroit area. On today's show, we'll talk to the Executive Director of the Performance Network Theater, John Manfredi, the Wayne State University Art Collection Coordinator, Sandra Shimsky, and explore the career of national recording artist, Elijah Connor. And now, let's welcome John Manfredi of Performance Network Theater to Wayne State and Metro Arts. Welcome. Thank you. Now, when was the theater founded? The theater was founded in 1984. And how did it get started? It was a group of uh, collaborative artists that put together and wanted to find a place for Michigan artists to work. And it was originally dance and theater and readings and uh, a group of artists. Now, it's a nonprofit theater. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how that works? Yeah, we're a nonprofit. We're the same as uh, any other nonprofit, which basically just means that we are able to take donations from people and that n uh, no profit that we earn goes. Uh, it, to any individual. Everything that we make goes back into the company. What does a typical season consist of at the theater? Well, we usually do uh, between five and seven shows. We have a subscription series of five shows, which we do, which are our main stage productions. And then we have two shows that we run over the holiday, which are currently running right now in December. And um, those shows run in repertory during the course of the week. So we have seven shows total. We also do concert events and music events and film events. And uh, we do a lot of things. 250 active dates last year. How do you decide what to perform? Oh well, it's a it's a conglomeration. It's a it's a collaborative effort between me and our artistic director Susie Regan, and we try and pick things that um, we think will appeal to our audience, that um, uh, speak to uh, what we want to talk about, uh, and uh, we work ourselves t uh, back that way. We know that we sometimes have to give people a name or something that they, they recognize because after all, you still have to sell tickets. So we're concentrated on new work, but we like to throw in a couple things that people may have heard of. We did just did Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, which was a stellar production and hasn't been done in this area for over 30 years. We actually have a trailer for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Let's watch. So we just saw that trailer. Can you tell us about the preparation for the play? Oh, it's been quite an ordeal. This play in particular, because you have to get approval for your set design, your costume design, your casting, your director, from Edward Albee, the author, before he will even give you the rights to do it. So after we went through that process, we then put our design team together, and we work for about eight weeks, the last four weeks being rehearsal, and then we're into performance. Salvage is a new play by a Michigan-based playwright. We have another video. Let's watch. different performing new works compared to established works? Well, new works, um, you are all, the script has not been set, no one's been done it before. There's not an, an examples necessarily that you can look at or go back to and see how people have done it before. We like to focus on new work, so we start from, right from the page, we get together in the room and we go through the process of developing the script as we work our way through it and uh, what we then produce is the original. 
And how can actors be a part of the theater? Well, we have an we have auditions every year. Um, we have they usually take place in the spring, and you can check them out at our website or go to our Facebook page when we post the auditions. And then in the spring, you come and you do your two monologues for us, and we'll take a look at that. And then as we get into each individual production, we have callbacks for those individual shows. And how do playwrights get their works produced? There we have a whole submission process, which you can also check on our website. We actually have um, a play festival called the Northern Writers Project that we um, held last year. We had over 300 authors submit plays, to which we selected four to give them uh, a staged reading uh, with some rehearsal time so that we could help flash, flesh out those particular plays. And what type of children's programs do you offer? Well, we offer uh, um, several different uh, children's programming. We did a show in this uh, last fall called um, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, which we performed um, in our space and then took down to the City Theater in a partnership with Olympia Entertainment and did the show down there. We're going to do that again in the spring with a play called If You Give a Pig a Pancake because If You Give a Mouse a Cookie was such a success. So we'll take that show and we'll do that in our space and then we'll move it down to uh, Detroit as well and perform at the City Theater down there. It's been a nice partnership for us and it's nice, um, we're, we like to say that Ann Arbor needs a little Detroit and Detroit needs a little Ann Arbor. So we like to get the, the two worlds coming uh, co-mixed together as we try and reach out. We also have a summer star camp which we run every summer. What's a great success this last time was actually featured on another PBS show which did, uh, featured the art camp um, about um, we have uh, students from 8 to 18 that come and work with professional actors, and then at the end of their two-week camp, they actually perform on stage with professional actors, which is something that's not done anywhere else. So we're really excited about that programming as well. And do you offer any other type of programs? We offer all kinds of programs. We have uh, music events. We did uh, partner with the Ann Arbor Film Festival this year as well. So we ha hosted three separate film events. So uh, one day we had a matinee performance and then an evening performance and then a midnight performance of a film at the same time. We like to keep ourselves busy. We also turned our um, lobby into an art gallery and we recently featured some students from the University of Michigan Penny Stamp School of Art and Design that came and did their senior thesis in our gallery so we had installations of you know visual art as well so we do visual art and we do readings and concerts and we'll have a concert on December 20th featuring Robert Grossman as well in our space. And how can people find out more about the theater? You can go to our website, which is www.pntheater, spelled the British way, T-R-E, dot org, and you can find all of our events are there. You can also check us out on Facebook. We're very diligent about getting out there on social media. Okay, thank you, John, for being here today. Thanks so much for having me. You're watching Metro Arts Detroit, produced at the Midtown Studio at Wayne State University. <laughs> Metro Arts producers Ruby Duffield and Justine Coven got a detailed look at some of the beauty on the Wayne State campus during the Art Walk tour. Justine Coven has this report. Wayne State University's Art Walk tour starts off at McGregor Memorial Conference Center with a steelwork by sculptor Robert Murray. The tour consists of over 25 different sculptures on Wayne State's main campus and medical campus. Most works can be found towards the center of main campus. The McGregor Reflecting Pools and Sculpture Garden houses several different sculptures. On the tour, you can see newer sculptures created in the past 15 years and even works created in as early as 1885. The hour and half long tour teaches the history behind the sculptures and how they ended up on campus. The art here, lots of it is donated. It's in commemoration of somebody either living or dead um, or something they did for the, for the university. And I think that's important because a group or a, a, a group of people got together, made the, they created the, uh, the fund and, the, and they donated it to the universities. Some works have tragic backstories, while other works have more uplifting messages. Wings of Learning by Alden Smith represents a visual concept of the learning process. Continuity by Jason Lowry honors the commitment of a former Wayne State president. All the outdoor sculptures are very large, but they differ in the materials used to create them. We also talk a little bit about the materials that are used, the bronzes and the aluminum and the steel. And that's also uh, rewarding to know that people suddenly realize that these are, these are items that they don't get to see very often. A majority of the sculptures on campus are created with either bronze or a type of steel. Outdoor sculptures require different types of care, depending on their materials. 
The sculptures on campus can change from year to year, depending on whether a work is donated to the university or just on loan to the campus. Currently there's a student competition going on with some sculpture work throughout the campus. My favorite sculpture we actually did see on the tour and it's an umbrella and it's actually made out of roofing tiles and piping, things that you would use for a roof of a house but it makes an umbrella. And I did vote in this competition because whatever piece wins gets to stay here permanently. So I'm hoping we get to keep that umbrella here on campus. For those who can attend a tour group, visitors can always take a self-guided brochure to tour the campus themselves starting with The Philosopher, a bronze work next to the old law school building. Reporting for Metro Arts, I'm Justine Coven. Thank you, Justine. And now, we'd like to welcome the Wayne State Art Collection Coordinator, Sandra Simsky, to Metro Arts Detroit. Hello. Hi, nice to be here. Now, can you tell me about your role as the Art Collection Coordinator? Well, we have nearly 6,000 works in the Art Collection at Wayne State, and one of my prime duties is really to take care of those works. Uh, over 28 works are public sculptures on campus and they require uh, a lot of conservation and maintenance uh, since they're out there in the rain and the snow. And um, we also catalog all the artwork, we do research on the artwork, and um, we also share it with other uh, institutions, uh, galleries, and so, so forth, um, and mainly let people know what an excellent collection it is. What's the mission of the art collection? Right now, we are installing works across the campus of Wayne State. We don't have a, a regular exhibition space, but we do um, want to enhance the lives of our students, and we feel that one real way of doing that is to surround them with wonderful art. Uh, most of it is unique art, so it's a real pleasure to be able to share that with our students and, and see their reactions and see how they can be challenged and supported by that work. Now, how do you acquire the artwork that we have here on campus? Almost 99% of the works in the collection are through gifts. Um, in um, 2008, we received a major gift of art from James Pearson Duffy, uh, and we have many stalwart supporters of the collection, uh, alumni, faculty, and area collectors who are now beginning to really understand um, that it's an excellent collection and they're happy to have their work come to us. Now can you tell me about the special relationship that Wayne State has with the Cass Corridor artist? Well the Cass Corridor which is now I guess Midtown um, was an area in in Detroit adjacent to Wayne State's campus where the rents were extremely low. Um, students and faculty and alumni were able to um, have studios in many of the buildings there and uh, it created a real community of artists. Um, many of those artists came from Wayne State faculty and alumni, and um, they responded to the urban um, center that Detroit was at the time, which was a little bit rough. Um, many of the works that they created were um, from found materials, um, and uh, the work is tough and gritty, and it's really exceptional work. So um, the gift of Mr. Duffy in 2008, and prior to that, a gift that he gave from his pipe warehouse in Detroit, uh, really put us on the track to being one of the largest and most diverse uh, collections of cast quarter materials in the world. Now, our collection recently did a collaboration with the Detroit Symphony. Talk about that experience. Um, thanks to the great support of the Eugene and Marsha Applebaum Family Foundation who supported an exhibition schedule with the DSO um, for the next two years. We'll be installing exhibitions in the um, Max Fisher um, Atrium. Uh, right now we have an exhibition um, that's opening in the fall of uh, William Gropper who was a kind of a political uh, satirist and uh, we thought it would be fun to do an exhibition of that work during the heyday of uh, the elections. Now I was told there's a really funny story with the founders of Detroit sculptures. The founders of Detroit which we've kind of come to call the Fab Four. Um, they're Cadillac, um, LaSalle, uh, Marquette, and um, Richard. <laughs> And um, they stand guard over um, part of our campus on the Ludington Mall. But before that, they were part of the um, 
facade of the old city hall in Detroit. Uh, when that was torn in, down in 1960, um, they remained in storage for about 12 years, and then they came to Wayne State where they stand guard. Uh, Cadillac um, is prosaically facing towards the Detroit River, so he's the only one that has a different facing. And how can people find out more about the art collection? We have a very extensive website. It's artcollection.wayne.edu. Um, on that site, we revolve pictures every week. We have a new uh, image from the collection, as, long as, it, as well as information um, about the collection. We have um, a facility for learning about caring about your art, conservation, uh, and we have online exhibitions that we create for the website as well. So a lot to learn there. Okay. Well, thank you for being here today, Sandra. Thank you. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. <laughs>
I'd like to welcome you to Metro Arts. Thank you so much for having me, it's an honor. Now we just watched an amazing video. How did you get started singing? Oh man, well to keep it short, I started in the church and then after that I went to New York and after modeling, you know, I was humming around and you know, I got into the studio with Diddy and then did some things and now I'm here. So, you know, I'm just excited and blessed to be here. You recently did a reality TV show. Yeah. Tell us about that. Uh, it, was a, it was an experience. You know, reality TV is, uh, it's kind of like acting, but it's not, <laughs> you know. Um, reality TV, though, isn't always reality. But um, I enjoyed it. We got renewed for season two. So, you know, I'm just in a good place right now and just building and I'm just glad to, to be here and give back, definitely. Now you're getting ready to perform. Yeah. Tell us about the song you're performing. Uh, the song I'm performing today is Sorry I. Uh, it's just a record that I wrote and uh, together with a friend, Tasha, and some other people, and we kind of did some things. And uh, it's just basically telling a girl, listen, I'm sorry, I know I messed up. You know, we as men sometimes mess up, but I swallow my pride and I'm just saying sorry. Okay, and how can people find out more about you? Uh, you can find out more about me at ElijahConnorOfficial.com as well as Twitter and Instagram, that's E-L-I-J-A-H. It's at the bottom of the screen, C-O-N-N-O-R. Okay, I'd like to thank you for being here today. Thank you so much, definitely. And now, here's Elijah Connor on Metro Arts Detroit.
hope you enjoyed today's show. I would like to thank our guests, John Manfredi, Sandra Shimsky, and Elijah Connor for being here today. Remember, you can catch any of our shows online at MetroArtsDetroit.com and find us on social media. I'm your host on Metro Arts, Rachel Simone, reminding you to always remain open and embrace the arts in your community. Thank <laughs> you.